All right, so look, maybe maybe we should start off this recording with Nick introducing the topic for this week since he chose it. It's the, it's the best topic that you've never heard of. It's who is the most important injured player to a team that is fifth or below in the standings? And we were doing one for the West and one for East. Um, do you want to start West? Because I feel like West has the interest. I feel right. like West actually West. has players that are injured. West it is. Um, so here is a short list of players that I looked at. Uh, Zion, Damian Lillard, uh, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Jamal Murray, and Michael Porter Jr. They were identified injured players for good stints of time that could have an impact on their team. Who did I settle on as the most important injury? Uh, ironically, not a fringe contender. It's Zion Williamson. I picked him pretty much because the entire trajectory of that Pelicans franchise hinges on whatever they're doing with Zion. And I think that that injury has more implications for them, not only just this year, but moving forward. Uh, you know, there's aspirations of they can make the play in if Zion comes back and he's healthy, right? They talk about that. But there's also the reality of, are you going to give this guy a rookie extension? Are you going to have to trade him to get something out of him before he becomes a complete bust if he really is like on his only leg that he's ever had? Um, but also, you know, this was the Anthony Davis package, really. You know, you traded him, you know, yes, you got Brandon Ingram and some other pieces around that, but you let Lonzo walk. I, I don't think Josh Hart is going to be the piece that you're missing. Brandon Ingram is probably a standout. But if Zion is legitimately injured and permanently injured and doesn't come back, I think the Pelicans are stuck or they're reset again. I, I think uh, your Zion pick is a pretty uh, pretty safe pick there to, to talk about, Nick. I, um, I think uh, I had Zion on my list too. I, I do like to talk about Zion. But I actually uh, had a player in the, in the West that will technically... I don't know, maybe technically is not injured, but he's, he's out. He's out. All right. 20 points a game, seven assists, three rebounds. This, this player can make an impact for this team if he was playing. The player I've chosen is John Wall. John Wall could be making an impact if he was playing for the Houston Rockets right now. Now, let's be clear. I, I don't know. Is Houston tanking? Like, it doesn't feel like Houston are tanking. Like, they are. like they're, they're, they're last, but they don't, they don't look like they're tanking. Okay. And the reality here is that if they were playing John Wall, okay, either having him, you know, start and but playing, you know, 25 minutes a game and obviously then bring, you know, one of the, the younger guards, Kevin Porter Jr., I don't know, he's supposed to be a franchise piece, but he's still got a long way to go, I think, from anything that I've seen, uh, you know, from his game so far. But or either bringing him off the bench like a D. Rose sort of, uh, you know, sort of mentor coming off the bench and uh, playing in that second unit, this guy can play. Uh, this guy can play. This guy is, well, maybe not injured. He's, he's uh, definitely, um, you know, uh, out though. And at the end of the day, Houston, if they're tanking and the whole plan here is that they want to go young and, and get more picks and things like that, they need to move John Wall. They, they've got an asset here that they can do something with, but they got to showcase him. The fact that he can go out there and still get, you know, 16 points a game and five assists, uh, someone will, will look, look at that. Someone would consider that. All right, but without him playing, he's not movable. He's not movable. The only contract out there is swapping him from for Westbrook again. <laughs> and I've seen those memes, right? So, so it's like, I, I think John Wall could be helping the Houston Rockets if he was playing, okay? But he would also be helping them, not necessarily with, with the wins column, but obviously helping them with what their, their bigger plan is. And, and obviously, I, I thought, you know, looking at the list of players that were out, obviously in the West, that was definitely a name that stood out there. Uh, I, know, I know a few... A few you know, maybe a few days ago, they weren't last in the standings, but now they're suddenly last. So, you know, <laughs> I guess that's how quickly the landscape changes. So, hmm. They're an interesting team. I think they start one of the youngest teams of all time, not just the season or in the league. Um, and so naturally, you've also got two, like, kind of chuckers in the backcourt. And so they'll get numbers, but they're going to lose while getting those numbers. Now, Kevin Porter Jr., I don't think he's the cornerstone for them. If they can flip him, for anything better than a 54th or lower draft pick, they have made profit on their trade for Kevin Porter Jr. So they picked him up from the Cavs to basically the 55th pick. They bought so low. So they bought incredibly low. And that was because of the behavioral issues, which have appeared in Houston, but we'll see how that plays out. Um, you know, Houston's interesting. They've got Christian Wood. People would love to pick up Christian Wood. Um, and they've got a couple of good rookies, you know, Jalen Green, Shangun, et cetera. Um, Eric Gordon as well as a veteran that everyone's like, if he's on the buyout market, that's a great pickup. But... Um, yeah, look, John Wall is interesting. I think, I think it's crazy. Like for us who never 
you know, who have had injuries at time or, you know, maybe have just felt a bit tired. We have played games of basketball because there's a sense of like urgency of like, I can't do this forever, you know? And he's sat out years of his career now, some because of injury, but also some because like, like he's getting paid a lot of money to not play basketball. I just, I, yeah, I, I look, I, I'm, again, I'm not saying any of us know John Wall down here in Melbourne, even though he owns no. part of the, the, the uh, Phoenix. The Southeast Phoenix, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's my, that's my Every closest NBA connection. Does, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I don't know. So that's my closest connection, right? He owns a team that's based in Melbourne and I live in Melbourne, but surely John Wall as a basketball player, the money's great, but he wants to play. And just like you said, his clock is ticking. He's now, what, 30-something? All right? 31, and, 32. Yeah. yeah, all right. And uh, and he can still play. He can still contribute. Um, whether he's in the franchise play anymore, obviously not. Okay? But uh, but he can join a contender. He can obviously come and play either spot minutes off the bench or obviously, you know, play, like I said, that D-Rose sort of role. Um, and, and from everything that I've seen and read, I think uh, he would accept such a role. Okay, he, he wants to play, he's healthy now. Uh, I think he's a player that should be playing at the moment that would help um, help whatever team he is ultimately playing for. That's a good point. I'm glad that we didn't go for the easy stuff like Kawhi Leonard or Jamal Murray. You know, we didn't we didn't do that obvious stuff. Yeah, that was way too obvious, right? Plus, plus it was, I mean, that's what I felt, yeah. <laughs> no, Denver's, Denver's fifth, so you could make yeah. a case and say if they had them, they'd be better. But it's like, no, it's also like a no shit discussion, right? Like we talk about it and it'd be like, oh, oh hot take there. What's, uh, what's your pick in the East, Nick? Okay, so this is the shortlist that I created. I created Ben Simmons, um, despite the fact that it goes against the rule, but I feel like he is out, So, and we did John Wall, so maybe. Gordon Haywood, who conveniently only just got injured, so technically he just qualified. Um, and then the two Indiana Pacers players, De Montes Sabonis and Miles Turner, respectively. Um, I can make a case for all of them, but uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to go with Ben Simmons. I just think it's the easiest discussion point, but also... It's just the implications around the league. Like it's not, it's not just the Philadelphia 76ers that are impacted by this. It's another team, you know, let's say Sacramento, for example, who surely acquiring Ben Simmons changes the trajectory of that franchise from where they're currently kind of dwelling, right? So he has impact on wherever he goes, but he's not having impact on Philadelphia. His only impact currently is negative. And you look at what Philadelphia is doing. They're fifth currently. Joel Embiid's currently stringing together the, the, the MVP season that he was putting together last. Um, and I, I don't really don't understand the mantra. Daryl Moore is obsessed with getting like a top 40 player or something like that. I just think if you put enough complimentary pieces around Philadelphia right now with a very interesting season where there's no clear front runner in the East because every team has an asterisk next to them. You know, you got the Bucks of Brook Lopez. You got the Nets who seem to be completely in disarray at this point. The Bulls who can't stay healthy and I think in a playoff series would be beatable. Um, and Miami who probably is the only legitimate contender, but you know, again, does, do they have anyone as good as Joel Embiid if the way he's playing? Um, I think Philadelphia would benefit from from moving on from Ben Simmons. It feels like you had the the benefit of going first, right? <laughs> Is that what you wanted to say Look, as well? Or I, I guess my my I actually shortlisted Ben Simmons was on my shortlist too. Um, I think you know no one can argue he's a He's an all-star level player that currently is not playing, but he's injured up here. Is that right? Or is he injured here? I'm not really sure if it's injured because of his feelings or or because of uh, what he's thinking. Do you feel it's come from your sure. brain or your heart? I, we don't, I'm not we, sure. We maybe maybe it's a bit of both. And that's why it's costing yeah. him millions of dollars because he's injured in both areas. I'm not too sure. All right? But yeah. um, obviously, um, Ben Simmons was definitely on my list there. I had also Ricky Rubio. Um, and, uh, but the, the Cleveland Cavs obviously are third. So technically they, that doesn't qualify. Uh, that's the East standing thing where yeah. it takes a win and all of a sudden you're first. You uh, know, just, like... just a foot, footnote for our five viewers this week that Nick allowed me <laughs> to, uh, to pick anyone in the East because these standings are so close. And, uh, obviously when I looked at these last, I think, uh, these players, these teams were a little bit lower. But the Correct. player, as you've already got this spoiler that I gave you just before we started, was uh, I'm going to say Victor Oladipo is the biggest impact player in the East that is currently injured and not playing. And if I just brought up his stats, this is from last season. Obviously, he hasn't played this season yet. 19.8 points a game, 20 points a game, basically 4.8 uh, rebounds, 4.6 assists. So basically, that's a 25 and 5 player. And he wasn't even healthy. Okay. And, and the thing here, this is the thing about this conversation you have to probably assume that the player will come back and play at the level that they 
can play out. It's it's another it's a whole other topic here to talk about. Can they do so, and and will they do so, or is Victor Oladipo done? Is he no longer an All Star player or a twenty five and five player? That's a whole other topic. But the the fact that if Victor Oladipo was healthy, he would be a huge addition for the Heat, which are currently first. <laughs> when I brought that up today, <laughs> but it, the, the point here is that they're first, despite Butler missing a lot of games. All right, he obviously has missed a lot of games. Um, there have been obviously COVID protocols and health and safety protocols hit as well, like any every other team. Uh, Tyler Hero has obviously missed a bunch of games there as well. Um, and they just keep winning. They've got a great culture. They've got a team that plays hard every night. And uh, look, they're starting, I think uh, they've brought back into the starting lineup Duncan Robinson at the, at the two spot. Um, but look, let's be clear, he's a, he's a great shooter, play a six man, yeah, and I think he's been, he was actually playing really well when he was coming off the bench, when they were bringing uh, Hero and Robinson off the bench in that unit, that second unit, because he's probably more qualified to play with that unit, in all honesty, and if you could slide Oladipo in that starting five, um, obviously they're half a game ahead of the Bulls at the moment, and a game and a half ahead of the Cavs, but if Oladipo was healthy and playing, you can make an argument here that they're probably knocking on the door for the best record in the league, you know, behind Phoenix and Golden State at the moment, um, you know, despite all the challenges Miami have had so far this season. No, that's a good point. Um, yeah, you look at Miami, you look at a lot of the teams at the top of the East, they've had their, their turbulent season so far. Um, Phoenix obviously had Booker down with the hamstring and Aiden with the ankle, but it, it just feels like Golden State and Phoenix have put it together better with a really healthy squad. And I think now they're taking their dip in health and they might drop a little bit in the standings. And this is where the East teams might catch up, assuming there's health. Um, I don't know. Look, Oladipo's stats might be a bit biased because I know that he played for Houston for a good portion of last season and then got the trade. And I don't know what his impact on Miami was. I think he might have got injured quite early on. Um, and his injuries are quite concerning because I believe it's either a patella tendon or a quad tear. And so, you know, because I'm secretly, you know, a lower body anatomy expert, um, <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. That sounds bad. Um, I just think, look, you know what? It's his explosive guard who didn't have a jump shot. And it's just, a, it's a bad mix. It's a well, bad mix. I'm not saying he can't contribute. But. You, you could, like I said at the start, you could definitely argue that Victor Oladipo will not be the Victor Oladipo that we uh, have last seen on the floor, uh, unfortunately, due to a series of injuries in the last few seasons. Um, but then again, we could probably pick a topic where we say Ben Simmons might never play basketball again either. Because uh, <laughs> if, <he>, if, <laughs> if we were doing this a little bit earlier on, it would have been who would have played a, a basketball game earlier, Ben Simmons or Kyrie Irving. That would have been a you know a bit of a hot topic for a bit because it took a while for that one to reveal itself. Mm, um, yeah. yeah, look, okay, not a great topic. I'm trying to get good at this a little bit. Did you check the be before we start talking about next week? We were four out of five for both conferences for the starters. Yeah, yeah. We how did Andrew how did, Wiggins how did, wrong? How did Wiggins get in? Because Draymond is better than Wiggins. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay um, i do like wiggins i do like wiggins i was a big fan of wiggins when he came out of a, college and as a know. as a starter it was an interesting choice i think that's just i think it's disappointing i think that's i would be curious i know the fan vote didn't favor rudy but surely the coaches and players vote would have i don't know maybe there's that utah slander from the other year well you know what look uh, I'm going to give a props to Andrew Wiggins. He's an all-star now. And, uh, First time uh, all-star. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for him. And uh, look, I think uh, his stats definitely don't reflect it, but I think winning is a big part. I think our picks sort of reflect helps, that yeah. winning is a big part. And and playing playing a role is probably a huge part too. I think uh, I think he is playing that role there pretty well as that sort of um, second option right now, I guess, or third option sometimes. And um, I guess, you know, good on him. He's getting rewarded for it. You know, who would have thought, you know, instead of going out there and just trying to be the number one option, you know, you just go in there and fit in and play hard each night and work on your game and lift your percentages and then you make the all-star team. I don't know. That feels like a formula for I, players to follow. I like that spin. That was very positive. Oh, I like there you it. Go. Great. You could, you, could do, um, you could do professional coaching for athletes and be like, be a star in your role. Don't be a star on the court, you know. <laughs> um, 